This piece of hardy wood pine came out of an abandoned building. You know, there are companies who actually take old churches, old buildings, and old homes that are going to be destroyed. They take all the wood out and then they grind it down to the original finish and it still has all this warmth and character. And then they'll make it into a piece of furniture for you. Well, I created this custom cabinet that you see behind me but I wanted to have a really warm and inviting, something that I could actually use, butcher block top. And they took this piece and we stained it with an edible stain so that we can actually use this for a chopping block. What I love about it is that it has such character, but it is also very functional. It's a great way to repurpose. Um, also, it's two inches thick, so it's really got some depth to it. Anyway, it made a great piece, and I love the fact that it has a great story to it. So the next time you want a countertop, why don't you consider a reclaimed piece? They're really good ideas, and Erlene Mandrell is with us and giving us some great tips and ideas for the holidays, too. Erlene, um, you created something special for your family, for your mom and dad, every year when you guys had the show. Tell me a little bit about that. We've got a clip. Well, we had a tradition growing up. Barbara started it, she was a little bit older than us, and started it where we'd put on a show for mom and dad every Christmas. I remember the youngest, when I was the youngest um, ever, was the only thing I could do was skip, and then it was even with one leg, because I didn't even know how to do that. I mean, that's how young we started, <laughs> like a few years ago. No. Um, <laughs> So when we did our Christmas special, it was Barbara's Christmas special after our, our show had finished. And so she did this around the fact that the bus broke down, her bus broke down, she's all by herself with Nathan, her youngest. And she's thinking about what Christmas would be like. And so she thinks about putting on a show for mom and dad. So this whole show is based around us doing a show for mom and dad. And so here's something special I did for mom and dad. I love it, take a look. here. It does give me a little bit more time, though, to share my Christmas fantasy with you. And if you liked our opening, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Lady and gent, the world's greatest prestidigitator. <laughs> you were supposed to make your entrance from over there. There's too much smoke over there. Look. A volunteer from the audience. I, I, want, I want to. I, I only need one person. It's my show. I'm close as an ace. Who babysat for you? Whose earrings are those? I got an idea. I'll use both of you. <laughs> Two boxes, man. Barbara, you get in this box. Oh, Louise, you get in this. All box. right. Well, help them up in there, okay, y'all? Yeah, help me up. Joy, you right. got it? Thank you. Oh, that's good. Take your shoes off, okay? Great. Louise, just lay back. Okay? Oh, lay down. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Lay down. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, so you set this up, and what happened? Okay, for the sake of saving a little bit of time, I'll just say, okay, I cut them in half. Sure. And then? This is what happened.
Good job. I mean, how, okay, I really, in private, I said, now, really, tell me really how you did that because how were their feet wiggling? And, <laughs> and so, um, and then, so she told me the secret and she's going to reveal it right now. What was the secret? I cut them in half. <laughs> I did. That's, the truth is, you know what's funny? The real truth. She thinks I just don't tell her because I signed a contract not to tell. I never asked. I went in there. I did my part. I cut them in half. That just happened. <laughs> I thought I was magic. I love I it. You really thought it. And see, I think I'm blowing the whistle because I'm like, what's the real trick? That's not, and she's like, magic. oh, it's magic. Are you, what are you asking me? What's, <laughs> anyway, that was so much fun. And I actually remember watching all of those clips. Uh, my mother and I used to sit and watch all of the show every single time. And we just had such a blast. Thank you. Well, one of the family traditions that you have um, that you want to share with everyone is become really an heirloom. I think everyone should do this. Tell you know, me about it. I this. wish I'd done it in other ways too, and I'll tell you in a minute, but this is my very, very special. This mm -hmm. is so incredible to me because, I, like I said, I, I lost my dad a few years ago, and um, this was made, and, and actually Louise made, took the same recording and, and made. Um, what well, could be something that you just put on your table yeah, or, and just hold or it right it. there so they can see okay. that that's your mother and father. Now see if you can hear this. Let's see. This is Mother Mary. And a wise man, your father. Wishing you a Merry Christmas, 1993. And a Happy New Year. We love you. Oh, how now, precious. How much I love that and it means so much to me and how much I wish I'd done that with each child as they grow, grew up. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about making them do it this year. My youngest is 18, but still, you know, or well, a little one start starting now? singing every year when they're like one year old and they're starting to sing, you know, wish you a Merry Christmas or Santa Claus is coming down, something, and make them do it every year even when they grow up. Well, and I mean, how precious is that to have your parents, you know, on uh, the recording and every time you put it on the tree, you can remember, and, and even more precious now that your father has passed away. It, it's um, the it's most a beautiful precious uh, ornament I'll ever have. It's incredible. Yeah. And where do you get these? I mean, do you, uh, do you know where, do you order them online? You can that find them a, a lot of places now. Okay, uh, so like in the mall? Almost everywhere, uh -huh. yeah. But well, I know that Barbara and Louise and I have done a few for friends, the three of us, you know, and given them away. And so but then you put the picture on the inside, you, you do the, and it tells you how to do the recording. You can, and you can redo it until you get it right. And then you remove something so it doesn't ever get erased. Ever get erased. I love that. What a great family tradition. This is a great idea. Well, we've got coming up, uh, I want to show you some ideas for decorating for the holidays. I know that so many of you will be putting up your tree this weekend and also be decorating for Christmas. So take a look at these. Uh, this is a, my Christmas tree, and if you look at the very top, there's a crown. That's actually a coronet, and I just, it, you, it normally hangs on the wall, and I just decided I'd put it right on the tree. So whether you're doing something like this, or maybe the pheasant pelts. Now, um, Arlene, you're a big hunter, so I know you would probably have a lot of these pheasant pelts. This is a great idea if you want to decorate your actually home. actually do, but not from the ones that I've hunted, but yeah, oh. we do, just because they're so cool. <laughs> and this is, if you want to have a seaside uh, Christmas tree, you can see that the um, uh, the topper, the angel topper, is actually a mermaid, so that's kind of fun as well. And look at this idea. This is one of my very first um, little cottages that I put in a little gingerbread house and it has marshmallows for the top and pink pretzels for the gingerbread all around so that's kind of fun and this is a tradition in our family because my my birthday's December 16th so I'm a Christmas baby and my mother always put poinsettias around the cake but my husband actually made this cake so that's kind of a tradition with us but now you've got a story about cakes and birthdays during Christmas and something that happened to your father at Christmas tell us about that that Chris, was this is the miracle Christmas is a miracle to start with it's amazing time mm -hmm. um, but my dad um, mom's first baby she was getting ready it was Christmas Eve she's getting ready to have the baby and the doctor came to my dad and said I'm sorry there's absolutely nothing I can do to save your wife or your baby I just that's it there's just nothing and dad was praying he was in the uh, waiting room and uh, a doctor came by that dad did not recognize and he came up to my dad and my dad had been a pharmacist mate in the, mate in the Navy 
and he recognized Dad. He says, um, I'm whatever doctor um, you served under me and you assist me. And he goes, uh, what's going on? So Dad told him what was happening. He actually let Dad assist him. And then uh, Christmas Day, uh, my sister Barbara was born, and Mom, of course, survived, and it was an amazing, amazing Christmas. Oh, what a great miracle. Mm -hmm. And then years later, what happened? Barbara my gets first, a present. <laughs> yes, my first baby, Derek, um, was born on Christmas Day. Barbara couldn't be there, she said, and he was actually, uh, I think, due the 1st of January. She said, I want him born on my birthday. And uh, it happened, and, and just because she, I believe it's just because she prayed it in, I think he was born within a minute of when she was born. It was That is amazing, great. two birthdays. Now, you said, though, and just like my birthday, I always enjoyed having my birthday in uh, during the Christmas holidays because as a child, I thought everybody decorated for my birthday. So I saw all the lights and I thought, wow, I mean, I'm like four or five and I think everybody's decorating for my birthday. But you all have very specific things now. Barbara set up some rules. Well, she did. She, <laughs> and you all make three birthday cakes. We, we do a birthday cake for Barbara, a birthday cake for Derek, and a birthday cake for the baby Jesus. And I love that tradition. And uh, also, Barbara said, and we, we followed this, no birthday presents in Christmas wrapping paper. You do not put it under the tree. You do not do combined presents. But it's been great for Derek because as you do go to people's houses on Christmas for parties, they remember it's your birthday. So you end <laughs> up with a lot of parties. It's great. They, they never forget that it's your birthday, That's right? it. We had a family Christmas always, never not on Christmas because we had our own kids and our own families, but we would have a big family Christmas. It could be two weeks early, two weeks late, but always celebrated their birthdays in addition to on the day of at the family Christmas. So that was special. That is so fun. Well, you and I were hanging out and we're trying to condense two hours of conversation into this one hour because we just kept talking and talking about traditions and ideas and I was like oh my goodness we've got so much to talk about but one of the things that Erlene was telling me about was so sweet um, was this little tradition you had with your dad about guess what's in the box tell me oh, about that oh this is funny my dad had such a great sense of humor and I'm sure that's one thing I love that he passed on with the family you know because mm -hmm. he always said you got to laugh about everything. I laugh at my mistakes all the time, and they're all the time. But anyway, <laughs> he would guess what's in his Christmas present from all of us girls. And one year we said, there's no way he's going to do it. And you know how you do, uh, it's a little present and a bigger box and a bigger box. He had to keep opening it. So it's a bunch of boxes and then a big box. And he got it and he shook it and he went, hmm, it's a coffee mug. And it was. So the next year, Barbara said, I bought him a present on my own. And I'm not telling you and Louise because maybe he's getting it out of you somehow and you don't know that, that he is. So she was so proud of, of uh, keeping this secret from dad. And before she went to school one morning, and she was in middle school, so back then I guess it was, it was called something else, but she answered the phone. It was my dad calling, but she didn't know it. And he said, we're doing a survey about Christmas and we'd like to know, what did you get your father for Christmas? She said, oh, a gold lighter. He said, thank you very much. <laughs> and it was engraved and she couldn't return it. She was so upset. But he, he was great. He was funny. He would always guess yeah. what's in the box. And what a great little tradition. I mean, that's something that anyone could add is guess what's in the box. Um, that's uh, what's fun about the traditions of the holidays is you can make up your own things that work for your family. Well, you also, we want to hear about the next generation of the Mandrills and your children. I want to hear what's going on with Derek and Vanessa and Christina. And we do have some pictures too. Tell us about the kids. Okay, my son Derek. And then with uh, her arm over his shoulder is my daughter Vanessa, my other daughter Christina, and then me on the side. You can tell we're laughing because we just have such a great time together. They are so much fun. And you see the picture where we're playing music together. Now they all sing and dance and act, and, and Derek's a drummer. And um, here we're together, me and my girls, because we just did a... Um, and what's the little dog's name? Is that your dog? No, that little dog is named Belle, and the, he's the star of that Christmas movie. It's going to come out next year, but we just did it actually a couple months ago, and it's called Jingle Bells. And um, my, if I had a second son, that was Christina playing her part in it. She, she had a 
pretty major role in it. If I had a second son besides Christina's boyfriend, because he's great, um, Blake is great, but it would be this little boy, Jet. When he was four years old, he played on stage with me when I was performing at the National Palace. And he was such great personality and played. Well, he's done tons of movies. And it's Jet Jurgens Myers, and he's going to be uh, one of the stars of this movie coming out. So I want to come back next year right before that. But oh, we just absolutely. Did that together. Well, we'd love to. We'd love to. So that's the movie Jingle Bells, but now it's coming out next year yeah. as the release. But you can see that the family just carries on the tradition, the holiday tradition. Uh, oh, it's wonderful. And the kids and I have just done a. Uh, reality pitch from uh, some the guys monkey time media out in california so we're hoping to get to do that together and we're playing music together and they're all acting and singing on their own wonderful time in my life i just love it oh i love that and you always just light up when you're talking about your children <laughs> i absolutely love it well get out your cup of hot chocolate and you're all cozied in and make a toast with us when we return